Hey everyone, I want to say hello to all my good relatives. Thank you all for being here and uh, thank you all for your support and all the outreach that we've had uh, as we are taking on this not only a mother too and born and raised in the rural countryside of our Coeur d'Alene Reservation. Uh, I want to first express that while we're all going through this incredibly difficult time right now uh, that I wish to show and express my strong support for the collective uh, condemnation of police violence and calls for police reform expressed by citizens all over the country in response to the murder of our relative George Floyd by Minneapolis police officers and the recent killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and others at the hands of law enforcement. I know it's very important for us to stay close uh, to uh, the national audience and those who are hurting the most, especially while we're going through uh, this COVID time uh, and the challenges of this virus that has impacted our communities. And my heart goes out to all of you for uh, those who have lost relatives or who are in mourning at this time. Uh, but while we are now still grappling with abuse of power in our government, we will not heal as a nation through silence. It's through this action, through progress, and through all the activism that we see in our young brothers and sisters who are doing their diligence and not underestimating the power of their vote. So yes, we have to make leadership listen, but we must also redistribute power through our vote and our own willingness to lead. Coming from the community that I come from in Northern Idaho, elders who have raised me, uh, and I want to trust this nation. Racial injustice is not something that ever turns off for me. I also want to make sure that uh, while we're acknowledging this COVID health crisis, not burned out ship in America. And the relief, the relief legislation we've seen in Congress falls short for many reasons. And the most concerning is that it's really a corporate bailout with hidden tax breaks for millionaires. And these times require responsible and accountable leaders, those less guided by red versus blue and more focused on right versus wrong and fact versus fiction. And at the same time, we're dealing with a parallel threat to our health and our economy and our social justice, climate change. There's so much at stake that it can be very overwhelming. And I know that feeling. Uh, I will tell you that it's very challenging knowing uh, what can we really, but again, uh, as my supporters have told me, you know, they're relying and looking for stability and accountability and leadership. And we are those people. We are the indigenous voices here in this space who can lead. But it's not just that they're looking for a fighter or a leader. They're looking at someone who can heal. So we're here because we're running for Senate, the United States Senate, because we believe that government is a critically important piece of our recovery as Idahoans and as a nation. And as all of our sovereign nations are coming together, we are living through this time through a government response to a national health crisis. And of course, the Black Lives Matter movement, that leadership matters. And today we're looking at unifying our communities, unifying our party, and unifying even the tribes, all the separate indigenous nations who believe in peace. And I will tell you that I'm encouraged by this time of unrest and awakening in our nations. The protest, people screaming out for change. Now we just have to bridge that gap between, okay, we're angry and this isn't right, to now, what do we want to do about it? Well, we vote. And yes, we need to make our voices heard outside buildings. But we also need to put people inside these buildings, lawmakers, enforcers, judges, build and elect leadership that reflects our values as a people of mutual respect for another and for nature. And I want to tell you, I'm running because I was raised by elders of my extended family, and I am extremely grateful for the knowledge they passed down to me. My grandparents' relationship and its expression of love, and we must respect each other and respect Mother Earth, and that they are what drive me and provide me with purpose. Having my two young sons, uh, I will tell you, without them, I would not be running. And that is because I know, just as all of you know, that the leaders of today are responsible and accountable to what we leave behind for our children and our future generations. I will tell you, a lot of folks will ask me why I'm running as a Democrat. Uh, I will tell you that support from all sides of the aisle, and it is because our brand of leadership, which does not pledge loyalty to any political party, but putting the people first, 
And I understand that the distrust of government officials, especially career politicians who enrich themselves like my opposition and like the Trump administration. And while I am being challenged on uh, all sorts of issues from being a woman or uh, being young or being indigenous, I will tell you that yes, I'm all these things. And yes, I'm a part of a new generation of leadership. And these are all qualities that will serve me well in this race. And because I am the outsider, I'm not the incumbent who's been collecting a paycheck from the taxpayer for over 44 years. I'm not the incumbent who received the most of their campaign dollars from corporate PACs and corporate CEOs in order to do their bidding. And I'm not the senator who has done nothing to help Idahoans with his 11 years in the US Senate. That is why I'm running. We're looking at the numbers, seeing the numbers of supporters in our gubernatorial race, making history there, uh, not only being the first woman uh, elected or nominated by uh, an official party for governor, but also breaking the glass, uh, even in this last race, uh, in the primary that we had here in June. We had overwhelming numbers of people coming through to support. And while we're making the significant change for our state, we're seeing the support nationally. The DNC knows it and national media knows it. And this entire nation is taking notice because brothers and sisters who are running, not only in the US Senate like myself, but those running for the house and down ballot. Because when we come together as sovereign nations, we make a collective difference. But all of these seats are gonna help us, especially when it comes down to impacting the White House, because whoever becomes president, they're gonna need the US Senate. And we can flip a state like Idaho. We've already done the work and we're just right there. And this is technically considered a chip shot. So if I can get all of our tribe relations to come through, support us, visit us at my website, paulettforsenate.com and contribute through your general counsel, contribute through your individual uh, membership. Uh, however people can volunteer, if they can make calls or send emails, putting out the good word, sharing our message. That is all essential and extremely appreciated. So I am extremely encouraged at this time because while my community is changing, I see that change all across this country and how important that is for us to be a part of these conversations. And it, leadership like yours matters and it's extremely necessary at this time because our young people are watching and they need us to step up so we can hold that place for them as well. But I'm not only here for our children, I'm here for our environment, I'm here for nature and everyone not only needs this change and healing uh, at this time, but we need to have a future that our children can inherit, a world, a planet that our children can inherit. So I wanna leave you all with this, that while I cannot do this without you, and a lot of people see our movement and know that it is good and that it's headed in the right direction. Uh, I know this makes them feel good. Uh, and then when they uh, get involved, it does make a significant difference. So I hope that you will all consider standing with us in our movement, not only here in Idaho, but here in the Pacific Northwest and making this a broader movement across this country because it is truly time for indigenous leadership. We must be at the table and not just me, but when we elect one of us as indigenous representatives, we are all successful. And I'm not only thankful to have represented the Northwest tribal leadership, but thankful to have been part of the national tribal leadership and have been able to learn from all of our great elders, uh, from Ron Allen to uh, all those from the East Coast. Uh, and of course, very thankful that you have taken the time, all of you, to invest your knowledge in me. And I hope to be able to best utilize this at the US Senate and encourage others to support our causes because our causes impact everyone, not just locally, but globally. And so I'm very proud to say that I'm indigenous very proud to say that I'm a mother and very honored to have your support and encouragement all along this. Way. So I'm uh, thankful again, very to that you all are staying with me in the support in any which way that you can to take on the U.S. Senate seat that we need to, to take on and to be in the rightful seat that we all deserve to be in. So thank you so much. Lim Lemsh to all my relatives.